Cap Caroso Resort in Sumba, Indonesia, targets 2022 opening. To acquire a 9 hectares plot of land on Indonesia's southwestern island of Sumba, a getaway some 50 minutes by plane from Bali, French entrepreneurs Fabrice and Evgenia Ivera first had to request for ancestral approval. This unusual requirement led them to host a traditional ceremony together with village heads for 600 locals, dressed in traditional garb. Their efforts have paid off, as Cap Caroso, a resort built on the purchased land, is set to open next year. Once completed, the resort will comprise a 47-room hotel and 20 villas. Without direct flights to the island, Sumba has remained largely unknown to tourists, and has been spared the usual buzz its more famous neighbors, Bali and Lombok, typically drew before COVID-19 hit. Spanning over 11,000 square kilometers, Sumba is home to stretches of stunning white sand beaches and tribal villages. Although Wi-Fi is available on the island, the way of life for locals has largely been shielded from globalization, megalithic tombs, for one, air still built to bury the dead, shares Eve, short for Evgenia. The tribes there live in traditional houses, huts with roofs of 25 meters tall, with animals roaming free on the road. When you drive, oftentimes you have to stop because, for example, the dogs lay on the road and they don't move as they don't yet understand that cars are a danger. It is really as if you are traveling in a country 1,000 years back in time, Eve recalls. People sport traditional wear, with men donning a machete at their waist, and women in their sarong. The couple first took a vacation in Sumba in 2017, and were awed by the natural surroundings and its unique Marapu culture, derived from an ancestral belief widely adopted by the Sumbanese. The natives comply with rituals and ceremonies, believing that the spirits of their ancestors will watch over them. The importance of ceremonies is one reason the locals are born into debt as they pour their money into such events and into building impressive tombstones. It's a completely different way of living. And I think this is what really struck us and we told ourselves, if we do a project, it must be here, says Eve. Melding architecture with landscape, design with culture. The Iberas engaged award-winning architect Gary Fell from Bali-based GFAB Architects to turn their vision to reality. Fell's approach for the project is to blend the buildings with the surrounding nature, accentuating the Sumbani's landscape with the geometric lines of the villas and hotel. Fell first traveled to Bali in 1996 to work on the Four Seasons Bali at Sion, and eventually set up his practice in 1999. The firm's past clients included a range of resorts, hotels and private residences, predominantly in Indonesia, Thailand and Vietnam. The villas at Cap Caroso encompass four two-bedroom duplex units, six two-bedroom villas, and ten three-bedroom villas, built from 5 meters to 14 meters above sea level. Each villa enjoys a spacious terrace with a lounge area, open-air kitchen, and barbecue deck, where guests can soak in views of the sunset and enjoy the sea breeze. Eve, who comes from a background in product design for luxury group LVMH, is particular about aesthetic details. This is evident at Cap Caroso, where each bedroom showcases a Sumbanese iCat, a hand-woven textile widely seen in traditional ceremonies held on the island. Other décor include Indonesian marquetry, artisanal ceramics, and vintage statues sourced from Sumba and Timor, Indonesia. Teak wood and stone from Sumba are also used in the bathware, which is designed to look minimalist and sleek. Eve had in mind to bring something that is, local, regional, sustainable and authentic, to Cap Caroso. When you see artisanal objects in shops and malls, you are so completely distanced and isolated from the real processes and acts that produce them. And I wanted in our project to combine all these elements, and bring things to the roots, she says. I believe that in Asia, especially in Indonesia, there is amazing craftsmanship, and an amazing know-how for lots of different things, like carving, ceramics and weaving, says Eve. It's amazing to actually go and source those things and find people who do them the best, and bring the objects into the hotel where our guests will be able to, not just enjoy, but also know why it is done like this, why this shape, why this color, and how it is connected to Sumba. Harvest from the farm, sustainable goals, built with sustainability in mind, Cap Caroso will source most of its fresh produce for its restaurants from its own organic farm, which is a few kilometers away from the main guest residence. The farm was set up by French organic agriculturalist, Philippe Guigliand, and is now run by a team of 15 local farmers. Occupying three hectares of land, the farm will play a big role in reducing waste. In Sumba, there are a lot of things that you cannot buy, like salad and big tomatoes. So imagine if your salad flies every day from Bali by plane, because it is the only way, by ship, it will be too late. Imagine how much energy and plastic would be wasted, and carbon footprint generated, says Eve. Pigs and buffaloes, reared to supply fertilizers to the farm, will be, in turn, fed waste from Cap Caroso's restaurants. Beyond just supplying produce and cutting carbon footprint, Cap Caroso's farm will also be educational and experiential for tourists. Tours can be conducted to educate them on, 
For instance, permaculture, a system for growing plants and crops in a self-sustainable way. Investing in sustainability has added to about 50% of development costs, EVE estimates. Such efforts in Cap Caroso include a blanket ban on plastic packaging, a water treatment plant to purify wastewater for gardening purposes, and a solar panel park, which aims to supply 85% of energy at the resort. Tourism Outlook With the pandemic casting uncertainty on tourism, Cap Caroso's opening has been delayed from November this year. The couple now aims to open the project in February or March next year, hopeful that mass vaccination drives will allow travel to resume. Today, countries like Italy or Greece have started to open to vaccinated travelers from the US in particular. We believe that this trend will continue in Southeast Asia, where countries such as Indonesia will be willing to open their frontiers to the vaccinated travelers, bringing back business and jobs to the local population, says Eve. Our priority is to open Cap Caroso after Indonesia opens to tourists, and when high-end international travel starts to get back on track, she adds. We believe that the entry-level tourist market will be deeply impacted by the pandemic, but luxury travel will be the first to get back to life.